Hi, and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. And we are here at Heartland. We are on day 15 of a 16-day Laws of Living Intensive. It has been awesome. And uh, I, I apologize. I just got uh, bumped off of the chat room. It's like, okay, what happens to technology here? Anyway, we are on day 82 of our Memorial Day celebration. And our call-in number is 646-200-4169. Hi, Michael. Hey, sweetie. We are having an awesome time. You should have been here for dessert last night, everybody. We had this. Jeannie created a, uh, a pie crust made of figs and rehydrated Cherry. dried cherries and uh, walnuts, sweetie. Okay. Walnuts and pecans, both. Walnuts and pecans. And then there was fresh peaches and fresh golden kiwi. And Julie made this awesome uh, topping. What was in the topping? It was walnut cream. Walnut cream. I mean, it was to live for, let me tell you. All actual food, not a spot of sugar, not an atom. I mean, you want to talk about orgasmic. This was it. And the night before, we had these truffles. I mean, the food we've been doing has just been so fabulous. A raw onion bread uh, we had for lunch today. Jeez, what else have we been eating? I mean, the, the menu, the food has been just so amazing. Uh, tonight, we have a vege- tonight we have a vegetarian meatloaf that a meat eater probably wouldn't know didn't have meat in it. And... Uh, we've had some kale salad today. That was great. Yeah, people who hate kale eat this salad and go, oh, my God, this is kale? You've got to be kidding me. So anyway, it has been a really awesome uh, food program that Jeannie has done. Thank you, your heart, for just the uh, – what, what are some of the dishes, other dishes? that I, I mean, oh, Spaghetti squash cut in, like, did it put through a, a Julian-type um, food processor? And then a raw tomato sauce? I mean, you want to talk With about meatballs. the best raw, uh, one of the best uh, spaghettis you've ever had? And then a, a raw lasagna? I mean, on and on and on it goes. You know, people think, oh, what do you do? You eat lettuce? Not what happens. Anyway. So that's Powerful the food processing program going on, too. Powerful processing going on, too. Yeah, this morning was, uh, was fabulous. There are uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of deep space opening for everybody in the workshop. And I uh, wish you could all be here, but uh, it was interesting. You know, we were just in the, one of the things we talk about in Laws of Living is dreams. And uh, the next morning, uh, a young man calls in and asks about his dreams. So it was like he was right at the uh, the intensive, just tapping right into the energy. So that was pretty cool, pretty cool. They get another opportunity, though, in September if they want to do it. That's true. If somebody wants to do, uh, get your hands on some absolutely fabulous food. During our intensive, everything we do is totally fresh and raw. And you have as wide a variety. In fact, one of the participants was saying today, you know, when, we, when we're ready to eat, we, we have a huge bell that we ring. And so... They, they were saying to one of the other participants who was here for the first time, he said, you know, when you leave here, you're going to miss that bell. And he was like, well, what do you mean? He said, because when that bell rings, that means we're going to get this awesome variety of these fabulous foods. And she's like, I can remember the first intensive I was at when I went back to Dayton, Ohio, and it's like, oh, where's the bell? I, I, where, oh. So, and you'll learn how to prepare those foods, too. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, Let's say if I if I could eat this this way all the time I would never touch a dead animal again, and um, so people part of the uh, the training part of the intensive is to actually get your hands on the food and learn how to prepare some of these fabulous sauces. We were saying at, uh, at lunch today that uh, lettuce was a great excuse to to eat these dressings, and everybody <laughs> drinks the dress everybody drinks the rest of the dressing off their plate when they're finished, and some of us even lick the plate <laughs> there so. So awesome. So anyway, so that, that, that'll be part of a nine-day intensive that we'll be doing. If anybody is ready to move your work forward to the next level, we actually have scheduled 
there were two people that were here for uh, for the teachers training back earlier last month, and uh, they wanted to do the intuitive development and asked if we'd set a schedule one for September. So September the 16th through the 24th, it's a nine day. It'll start Friday night and go through a week the following Saturday. We'll be doing uh, intuitive development, and in that intensive, we'll cover the workshops. Why is this happening again? key and important part of the process, the healing process is, of course, the forgiveness work and part of moving the things out of the way that keep us out of our intuition uh, is forgiving, is removing what never belonged. And so we'll be doing that. We'll be doing mind shifters and still point breathing, a way to use the breath to literally clear out years of garbage in minutes. It moves the, uh, the structure, this energetic structure from a state of resistance to a superconductor state in a very, very short time. I've had people who've been meditators, 20 years been meditating, and they're like, I reached the deepest meditation in 45 minutes that I've ever reached in 20 years of practice. And that's part of the intensive. And then the rest of the intensive will be focused on intuitive development. Intuitive development, the intuitive faculty is the one that uh, Einstein was talking about when he said, we've been given this incredible gift and what we've done is thrown away the gift, and then we have um, created a society that honors a servant, the rational mind. And, uh, of course, one of the things that we offer is in order to heal, you've got to be out of your mind. If you're locked in your rational mind, then you're locked in a thousand generations of such crazy stuff that, you know, life gets pretty bizarre. And so by being out of your mind and the, the whole practice of the intuitive development uh, intensive, is to spend hours and hours and hours working with having feedback so that you know when you're listening to your intuition instead of just some kind of fantasy in your mind. So it's pretty powerful intensive, and it'll happen. It'll start on Friday, July, or pardon me, September the 16th. And for people who work, you can take one day off work that Friday to travel, and then it'll go through a week the following Saturday. So that week is the only week you need to take off work if you're working or what have you. And then Saturday, Sunday, there's time to travel back home and get back for Monday if you're, uh, if you're working on Monday. And uh, so that intensive will happen uh, in September. If anybody wants to join us, uh, you know how to reach us. Uh, you know, our call-in number is 646-200-4169. Gee, do we have any callers? Our, uh, our Dr. Tim and uh, David with us tonight? David is on. Tim is not on today. And Nene's in the chat room, and she said that she was missing the wonderful food. She was eating as raw as she could, and she hoped that the recipe book would be out soon. I told her I was going to take it with me to Tennessee and do editing, and hopefully then within just a couple of weeks we'll have it off to press. Ah, uh-huh. Yes. That will be exciting. And there's, uh, it's going to be a, a whole new um, book with uh, many, many well-refined recipes coming to a new level. Oh. So David is on there with us. Oh, David, how do you be? You have anything to share today? How was your lunch? Uh, lunch was incredible. It's, the food is splendid. Um, done with such love and and, and I'm only hearing about every other word. I don't know if, if Michael's hearing you any clearer, but... No, it's just, uh, pretty much every other word. Another lo- let me move to another location. Is this any better? Better right there, yes. That's better. Yeah, better, better right better there. there. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I was saying this, the food is just splendid, and the group here is just extraordinary, and their level of participation and... Uh, the new insights that continue to evolve. When you were talking about Einstein and the uh, intuition and the part that we've uh, uh, that the society is most then dissociated from, is that uh, the group here is capped at that there's so many developments and unexpected developments. You know, I had a nice process this morning and. I've been in touch with some some uh, feelings and emotions and some buried uh, energies that uh, about my son and his dying a couple of years ago and 
process through a little bit of that and uh, the space. That a little have, bit. That was that. huge, David. Yeah. Well, you know. That was it, not it a was, little bit. Yeah. It was uh, quite unexpected. Yeah. I lost you again. Oh, yeah, I don't hear you. Oh, well, let me see. You. I'll move to another spot. <laughs> I'll just keep moving around. <laughs> Technology. You, you hear me now? How's that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is good, good now. Well, now I'm out. Now I'm outside. Good. So it was uh, that space that gets opened up from that intuitiveness of all of the energy and the level of willingness and participation by all of the uh, uh, all of the participants that are here. And, you know, it's uh, on an energetic level, a vibratory level, then it just it opened up. Everything was ready to to come out. And it was the last, I, it would never cross my mind, it never crossed my mind until uh, it resonated with that level of energy and then processed through that. So feeling very wonderful today and uh knowing that this is the 15th day, how quickly it has gone by. And I'm just encouraging folks that if you're having an intuitive feeling in a sense about attending this next workshop, it'll be the last really intensive that we'll do so that we have scheduled anyway this this year and uh, possibly until the next, next uh, June, July here for Heartland anyway. So... If you intuitively are getting a sense, well, I'd like to do that, well, then give us a call and create the space in your life in order to come and do this. Now, I was thinking, Michael, that we might do a uh, intuitive intro introduction call on the confer- uh, as a conference call. So I, I, I just made a note of that about five minutes ago. And so... Uh, We'll look and see maybe if there's questions that people have about the workshop and what it entails. So that's what's going on with me, and uh, would love to hear from some of the callers uh, something that might be going on for them that they would like some support in processing through. So if anyone has any questions for us, any thoughts on any of the work that you've been doing, please pick up the phone and give us a call. Six, pardon me, 646-200-4169 is the number to reach us at. And we would be awesomely blessed to get to chat with you and to share with you the support of the healing process. You know, Jeannie had talked about, and usually we open the show with it, and I didn't say much about it or anything about it, but the, uh, the fact that we're um, celebrating Memorial Day. This is day 81, sweetie. 82. 82. So day 82. And if you're new to the show, our celebration of Memorial Day is about our project of eradicating war from planet Earth, bringing a state of peace to the world. Uh, how do we expect to do that? Well, our invitation is real simple. That is, we're going to ask you each day to face something in your life where you have some form of hostility or fear. Let yourself soften around that issue and forgive. If you don't know what we're talking about with the forgiveness process, forgiveness in the Aramaic has nothing to do, and the base of our work is Aramaic, forgiveness has nothing whatsoever to do with uh, letting other people off the hook. In fact, if you've gotten into the habit of forgiving people, I'm going to suggest that you stop. And if you choose to pardon someone because they've done something that's, you know, bizarre off the hook, awesome, great, nice thing to do. But when you pardon someone, Please don't make the mistake of thinking you've forgiven. When you say, I forgive you, you're doing the act of pardoning. Forgiveness work is the way that you go inside yourself and remove the root of the disturbance, the upset, or the pain in you. That way you get to get finished with your pain. The other way you get to keep exacerbating your pain by focusing on what it is that you need to forgive. And by focusing, you intensify it and then you play the game of letting somebody else off the hook because it's there. Nobody's responsible for the fact that it's there but you, and nobody can remove it but you. There is a technology. There is a procedure for removing what never belonged in your human structure called forgiveness. 
It's an ancient Aramaic technology that is absolutely awesome. If you're not familiar with it, go to the website, www.whyagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com. And on the right side of the page, you'll see a link that says Download Worksheets. If you click on that link, uh, you'll see the first three items are a new Chapter 24 from my book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? And when you read through that, you'll get a description of exactly how the forgiveness process is done. And then the second link is the actual worksheet, the Reality Management Worksheet, the seven-step process. There are some others further down that are... um, different worksheets for working with the forgiveness process. But this this one is the base worksheet that has the most advanced information at this point uh, for introducing people to forgiveness. And then the third item, when you click on it, there was a, a just an absolutely awesomely um, powerful young lady that called in a couple of weeks ago, and we walked through a worksheet uh, with her. It was the August 2nd show. And the third link under Download Worksheets on our website, you can click on it. It's an MP3 of that show, and you have the most powerful. I mean, I've been doing, I developed, started developing this work about uh, 40 years ago, and the forgiveness process I've been working with specifically for over 25. It is the most powerful worksheet I've ever seen anybody do, and it is the most powerful demonstration of the kinds of changes that people can go through if they're willing to forgive. And so... We invite you to download that worksheet and put it to work in your life. It's going to change your life. It's going to change your life in ways that you cannot fathom at this point. And we're honored to have the opportunity to be sharing these airwaves with you and these ideas and supporting you in moving through your own work and the process of forgiveness. Did you need any uh, calls in the uh, chat room or, or pardon me, comments in the chat room or any calls? We do have a caller on area code 607. You're on the air. Who do we have? It's Richard. How are you going? Hi, Richard. So, uh, and Michael, are you still there? Hello? Michael. Uh, let me go tell him that he's not, he's not on. Hold on a second. <laughs> How are you doing, Richard? Pretty good in yourself. I'm having- doing fabulous, and uh, I invite you and acknowledge you for your participation and your willingness of uh, doing your worksheets ever since that you comp- completed your intensive here, uh, the Wagon Intensive. For the folks that don't know, Richard made a commitment to continue doing minimum of one worksheet every day and uh, contacting. Uh, why, again, when he has that completed as a way of supporting and acknowledging and um, uh, just supporting him in in doing that to keeping his agreement with that. And he's done it every day since then. So congratulations, Richard. Thanks. So I'll wait till Michael gets gets back on. uh, Oh, I'm here. Are you there? I'm here. How are you, sir? Oh, uh, blessed and highly favored. Say, I, I just jumped on after been on the phone with a, uh, with someone, and, and and so I was sort of mentally going through a, a you know a uh, worksheet because uh, you're well, going to call and talk to you about what's going on and the situation that just occurred. Uh, I, I, I'm part of a meditation group here in Ithaca, and this person that emailed me last night and saying that, that uh, he had some concerns and he wanted to talk to me about so something that had happened at the meditation group and and uh, or at the place where I go to meditation. So I happened to uh, get a call from him here about 20 minutes before the show started and uh, I'd been talking to him for like the last half hour and when I first got on the phone with him his, his first um, you know 
you know, he hasn't been there for like, you know, I can't remember when he quit coming back in the middle of the beginning of the summer or maybe March, something like that. I don't remember now. But apparently we had had a little Sunday gathering after meditation one morning, and his recollection was that he he felt that, that I had uh, somehow had some sort of uh, – Disagreement with the way he was running or what he was doing. You know, he was basically doing, you know, sharing a um, in the meditation once, you know, a few times. And uh, apparently, somebody had gone to the board and complained, and and uh, he had where, where are we going? Where's the bottom line here? Well, the bottom line is he. What's the resolution him. look like? Well. Basically, at this point, is I was calling because I'm in the process of, you know, after getting off the phone with this guy, realizing that I needed to do a worksheet on this because, uh, and so I figured it was a good opportunity to talk to you and you know, just walk through this process. That what's going on in my own life right now is this. Uh, you know, first, he, uh, you know, thought that I had talked to the board and complained about what he was doing and, and said that I had had a disdainful look on my face that day at the, at the thing. And I said, well, Rich, you know, this is the, you know, three months later, I have no clue as to what you're talking about. And, you know, at first he wouldn't even, you know, I said, yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. And, and, and uh, eventually he, you know, mentioned he thought I had a disdainful look that I had had uh, had uh, complained to the board, and I said, no, that's not the case. I said, I'm not sure what you're talking about in terms of all this stuff. But anyway, in the end, after, you know, talking about this, you know, he definitely wants to continue talking. But after I got off the phone, I re- realized I had this heaviness on my chest. And right. it's like, okay, you know, what's going on here? Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm reacting to this call. And, and there's something going on inside of me, and so that's why I'm calling to see what you know how we can wa- walk through, uh, basically you know talk about this uh, maybe through a working so, process. Uh, uh, so if you look at the, the situation, would at at this point with this heaviness you're feeling, would the object of attention of that worksheet be yourself or this fellow you had the conversation with? Well, obviously the conversation triggered the heaviness in my chest. You know, right. I'm feeling this, this like, this, uh, you know, this, this like. So then you start out the chest. worksheet. Okay. So you start the worksheet with uh, with number one be his name. Right. And of course your initials. Right. And um, received the call from Rich. Right. And would you say that his tone and his conversation was accusing for you? Felt accusing? Sounds like maybe. Well, his basically he 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 he's concerned about who you know the. Uh, okay, I, I'm not concerned about him right now. I'm concerned about you. What what's your take? We're doing your worksheet now, so well, he, so he, what would be he, he your sense of? Right. He was concerned that I had uh, had. Uh, no, no, oh, it's not about him, Rich. Oh, hold it, hold it, stop, right, step right, back. Right, right. This isn't about him right now. It's not about what he thought. What I'm asking you, this is your worksheet. He's the object right. of attention. So now you're going to write about your perception of the situation, not what he said or what he thought. But my my. The, so the bottom line, the way it sounds to me, is that you experienced him as perhaps being accusing or blaming you? Is that what your reality, your experience is? Right. He was He was thinking okay. that I had... No, yeah, no, no. It's me. not about what he's thinking. No, stop. Stop. You, you're moving your focus to him at this point and trying to explain what he was thinking, saying, doing. But your heaviness has got nothing to do with him thinking, saying, or doing. Right. He had a conversation, and so now right. you want to focus on you. So in this step, I have a reality, and what I want to describe is the situation. So the situation was I got a call from Rich, and to me it sounded, did you take it as accusing, blaming, 
What's your reality? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he was, yeah, yeah, it sounded accusing and blaming that I was, you know, that the reason he wasn't coming back to meditation anymore was because he felt that I had gone to the board and complained about okay. what he was so doing. So notice, notice, here's, here's a little trap you set for yourself. Notice that you keep going to what he did. Right. But this isn't a worksheet about him. Right. He's the object of attention, but it's about your reality. That's why your initials are there after his name. Exactly. So we want we want to work with your reality. So then, in the the conversation, so the situation it would seem would probably be I had a conversation with Rich, and it seems like he wants to put his not coming back to the meditation group on my shoulders. Correct. Would that be accurate? So, yeah. so that's your reality, and that's what you want to do in that step is describe your reality about that, not his words, but your reality, what it triggered in you. Right. So and, that's what and, I'm and, feeling number, the number one uh, be with. Okay. And so then what, you know, my, my feelings about it was, I, you know, after I got off the phone, I realized I had this heaviness in my chest, you know, it's like, Okay, my so I mark that in number one C. So number one C, heaviness in my chest. Right. This and if you were to weight. tap into that heaviness on an emotional level, how would you describe that? Would that load look like guilt, fear, self-condemnation? What would that load that is in your chest look like from an emotional perspective? I want you to get into how it feels. Well, I, it, the best way I can describe it is like a constriction, like it's like like my breath okay. is being, you know, being. Uh, 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 I guess you might say it's more a little bit of combination of everything: guilt, fear. Uh, my own, okay. Uh, I guess maybe my own well, my fears dad. about. Okay, so I'd mark that number one C. Right. Constriction. Then, right. Heaviness. Guilt, fear. And then uh, my thoughts around it are uh, uh, well, it's, you know, it, I guess it's becoming defensive and saying, well, Rich, this is your problem. You're the one who's not coming to meditation and, and not. So that's a defensiveness. That's right. a defensiveness uh, that would tend to put that off. But right now, what you're feeling in your body is guilt and fear. And so it's not about why he's coming or why. And, and just you might want to just notice the pattern. What your mind wants to do is it wants to go over and talk about his problem. And that's kind of typical for all of us humans. I have something going on inside of me, and I want to talk about you because that's the way I avoid me. So what I want to do is keep you on track with this worksheet, and that is, so I have guilt about this. So there's a thought beneath the guilt. And so in number 1D, what's the thought that I use in my physiology to cause my guilt? The other conversation uh, that goes to being about him is a way for you to dissociate from your guilt and your fear and keep you from facing the cause of your guilt and your fear. When you start facing the cause of your guilt and your fear, then you'll be able to change that cause. As long as you have a conversation about him, you'll never change the cause of your guilt and your fear, which means you're just going to have to pull somebody else in to play it out with again and again until you're finished with it. Right. So if you you look at that situation and you let yourself for a moment just tap into the guilt, what's the thought you use to cause yourself guilt out of that conversation? Well, the the thought that I would use is that that he doesn't like the way I perhaps run the meditation group unless because I he didn't like what I was doing. I don't know. I mean, that's the- okay. So then, 
So the guilt is about him not liking what you do. So in this conversation, he triggers you, uh, him, he triggers the thought that what you're doing isn't good enough? Right, correct. Okay, so then I, I just make a, jo- a note in number uh, uh, in C, and that is guilt dash, um, he doesn't approve of the way I do things. Right. That would be the thought you used to produce guilt, and now the other feeling that you identified was fear. What's the thought you used to produce fear? Uh, so in that situation, what goes on in your mind that you kind of tend to dissociate from by having the conversation about him and he's not coming, so it's his problem? And no, no, no. But the guilt and fear that your physiology is producing is what you want to dump and get rid of. Right. Well, I guess the, what he brought up for me was my fears as to the direction that the foundation of light is going, where where it's headed. And again, that okay. that it's you know again it's possibly going in a direction that I'm not uh, you know possibly you know that I don't uh, that. Again, the, the guilt feeling is that what I want to present at the Foundation of Light isn't acceptable by others. Okay. So that was the guilt one, but now you started to work on the fear. Right. So, so then the second, the second thought you'd have around guilt, so I'd, I'd make another dash after that first thought we came up with, and the second was that I'm perhaps not presenting the, uh, the Foundation of Light properly, the organization properly. Now, would that more tie to the guilt or more tie to the fear? Well, it's more you know, tied to the conversation about more, looking at the fear. It's more, tie, it's more tied to the fear that the foundation is going okay. in a direction that that, I, that, that, that I guess I'm not uh, happy with or whatever, uh, that I'm not upset about in some respects. Okay. So then I'd make a little note in 1C about, the, uh, uh, about fear and that I may not be representing the foundation of light properly and may be contributing it to going in a downward direction. Is that what I'm kind of hearing? Uh, well, in, in, yeah, in, in, I would prefer it prefer to say it the other way around, that, I, that what I would like to present is, is moving the foundation in, in, in a positive direction and, 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 and uh, the... Uh, you know, that I, right, that's what you want. That's what you want. So right. if you would, now let's take an intermission here from 1D and let's go down to number 6. Oh, pardon me, number 3. And, and just make a small note there about want the foundation to move in the right direction. That's a goal. Correct. But just make a small note. That may not be the key goal in this worksheet yet, but just make a small note there. I want the foundation of light to move in the right direction. Correct. Okay. So that's the goal, but up in number 1B, your thoughts with which you're causing fear what you said was that I may not be representing it properly and the logical result of that would be that maybe I'm moving it in the wrong direction. No, no, no. I, I don't think I'm saying that at all. I, 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 uh, well, I think what I was saying well, was what, what, my fear is that I'm coming in conflict with the with the way the direction, with where the, where the the uh, leaders of the foundation are are perceiving me going in, in a direction that's counter to what they want. Okay, so then the thought is the the thought of fear is something around again. I'm not doing it properly. I'm, the fear is that I'm going to be rejected. Okay, ah, there you go. Okay, so. My fear is I might be rejected. And, right. of course, that rich is the symbol of you being rejected, right? Right, because he left and, and he's 
you know, yeah. sort of blame, blaming okay. me for the reason why he left, or at least okay. that was his. In, when the, the first conversation was about, you know, okay. what he felt the he the about me, and I said, well, look, look at three months ago, I have no idea what you're talking about, you know. <laughs> uh, Okay. But again, it, it so was, again, it, it's coming down to the fact that it, it's it's triggering my fear that I'm going to be rejected based on what I'm okay. presenting. So then, I, in number one D, I make a note: the feeling fear. From above, you're going to take the feeling fear and then a dash. And what's the thought? The thought is, I'll be rejected. Right. And perhaps I'm causing people to leave. Are you yes. breathing? Yeah. Good. Uh, well, so I, I, mean, I, was, I, was, I was thinking about what you were saying. I was yes, I was holding my breath. I wasn't breathing because I was thinking about oh. what you were saying. But yes, that's true. So, it is. Okay. It's so, a feeling that maybe that people are leaving because of me. You know. Okay. But the so, thing is, is so you, Richard, let's, know, hold let's hold there. I don't want to go too far away from from uh, each step of the worksheet. So let, let's stay there with the thought a minute ago. So notice when you say. I was holding my breath, and I knew you were holding your breath because there was a thought there that you've dissociated from and don't want to look at. And when somebody says, oh, I was thinking, that's why I was holding my breath, here's what I'd offer is happening. My whole body-mind unit is a device in which I store my thought, mind energy. And... When there's something that I don't want to deal with, that I don't want to see, I dissociate from it by holding my breath. And I lock that down somewhere in my tissue structure, somewhere in my body. In this case, it's probably in my when I, Okay. Okay, good note. Make a note of that. So when I hold my breath and I say I'm thinking, here's what I'm doing. From the neck up, Everything that's in that part of the biocomputer I've approved of, it's okay for me to play there. But the stuff from the neck down, no way. I'm not going there. That's where I store all my dissociated stuff. So when I say I'm holding my breath because I'm thinking, what I'm saying is I'm only looking in a safe part of my biocomputer and leaving the rest out. So the invitation is to breathe and let yourself be with what's there, and that would be a good thing to make a note. Uh, there are number one D is, you know, this is locked in my chest. Good catch. That's probably a product of the awesome body work that you do. That kind of body work. That okay. there make so, sense? Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm consciously breathing right now. So that... Oh, awesome. And then number one E I want to punish. What do you want to do to this fellow who's your object of attention? Punish him. What What would be the, is there a punishment thought there or a separation thought? Well, I guess, you know, the only, you know, make him, I guess, somehow make him realize that he's the one that's, that, you know, separating himself from the group, not, not us, you know, you know, I, it's his thoughts that have taken him away from the group, you know, his his uh, issues that have, uh, you know. Oh, and, but, the, but notice, Richard, it, notice, yeah. Richard. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming back to you. You have a concern and a fear about being rejected and not doing it right, and you're talking about how he's taking himself away. Now, right. that may be accurate, but that doesn't, that that switches the conversation out of, what you need to deal with into another realm. That's a mechanism of avoidance. And so I'd invite you to give up all the conversations about him and keep the conversation about yourself. Okay. So at this point, number 1E, it sounds like your punishment thought is, I want to blame him. I want him to get that it's his problem. Yeah. But I'd offer well, that that's it's not his thought. problem. But, but, Richard, it's not his problem that your mind and your emotions and your body are producing guilt and fear. That's your problem. Correct. You can project that by saying it's his problem, he's the one who's leaving, therefore. But that's just a way to dissociate from what you're getting the opportunity to heal in the situation. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. So, 
So then 1E would be, I want him to get it's all his fault and his problem. So what was that again? I want, I, I, want, I want to blame him. Basically, I want to blame him and for him to see that it's all his problem. Okay. Correct. And then, I, so that's number 1E. But I'd make a note on the next line in number 1E, and I realize that my guilt and my fear belongs to me, not him. Correct. And, and notice the, the pattern. Like I think it's been maybe five or six times now I've been to drag you away from the conversation about him to keep coming back so that you get to move down inside yourself to see what the root of this is for you. And and that's just, you know, typical of all of us because our whole culture's language is about, you know, it's all out there. They may feel they, they, they. So the, the shifting back to going within is the, is a challenge. So so that's great. So we've got number one complete and laid out. Now, remember that the um, mind, when it's experiencing something through hostility or fear, is creating its output, its pictures, its realities, out of corrupt data. And when we have corrupt data, we're seeing something that isn't true. So then, number two, there's a choice. I choose to love truth. And I'm willing for my mind to show me the whole truth, especially about myself, and the content of my own mind. And then what is healing going to look like? It's very likely going to look like touching into some of those original times in your life where there was some form of hostility or fear. Maybe experiencing emotional symptoms around that. Maybe getting in touch with some old thoughts about yourself that uh, you really don't like to look at. And there may be physical symptoms that go along with it. So step two is the choice to love truth and to be willing to go through the, both the, all three, the physical, the mental, and the emotional symptoms of healing. So how about just taking that step? Just I choose the Right. Well, what, 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 that, what that brought up for me was a memory of, uh, uh, of uh, when I was, I don't know, seventh grade maybe, and high school, mm-hmm. and there was a, a uh, the Sunday school teacher at the time uh, had sort of like given our group a I don't know uh, a cotton to say to speak of you know what's going on with all you guys blah 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 you know and and this and that and this and that and I can't remember all this, this stuff but. Uh, within a week or so, he was killed in a tragic accident. And he was off. He was a very revered person in the sense that he was, you know, active in the community. Very. Uh, it was devastating you know, obviously within the church because uh, of this person who had such a vibrant life to look forward to. And and he was definitely close to our family and was killed in a tragic accident. So, And how does this relate to this situation for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm just saying that's the memory that came up for me was of this person giving us this talking to and then being taken away. And Did you have like, some resentment toward him point. for the talking to he gave you? No, I don't recall at this point other than it was, you know, it was more of an inspirational talk about, you know, what are you guys doing with your lives, this type of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so I'm not sure. I, I, I'm just saying that's, that's the memory that came up okay. for me. Okay, so I just make a note of that over on the right-hand side of the page, you know, his name and uh, that he was killed a week after. Somehow this ties in. We'll just make a note of it for now and move forward with the worksheet. Okay. So then in this whole situation, it sounds like, you know, if you look at number three, 
I love want number 1A, so this worksheet is on Rich, what was it you wanted from Rich? Uh, well, I want Rich to uh... Are you breathing? Yeah, well no, I'm not. I'm thinking. Okay. I'm trying to. I'm trying to okay. bring up so, something sorry. to say, and so I'm holding yeah. my breath rather than than. Uh, right. Yeah, I'll go back to breathing. So, so remember that holding is, your breath. What do I want? I'm what, looking. What do I want from this situation? Uh, well, I want Rich to uh, accept that the group is a dynamic group that you know people keep coming in and out of it. You know, and, and uh, you know it's not necessarily the same people every week and the, the group keeps changing. There is a core group of people that you, know, you just that switched work sheets. You just switched work sheets. Well there may I want, be work I want, sheets to do there, but that's a totally different one from the one we're doing. You want to look in this specific situation, what's the goal you held for Rich? And it sounds like from everything you said that the goal and, and it's, it's really common. It's a very common thing for people when they get down to number three to switch to a different issue so they won't have to go deeper into the issue that they're digging into with this particular worksheet. So moving into wanting him to understand that the group is dynamic is totally different than he's rejected you, he's perhaps left the group, left the group because of you, uh, the whole sensor may be going in the wrong direction, and you may be the guilty party. That's all whole different worksheet, a whole different process. And it's very common for people to switch into another issue. So so I'm going to ask you to come back to this particular issue. There may be other worksheets to do around Rich, and that you might make a note would be one of them. But I'd stay with the goal you have here. And it sounds like the bottom line is, and I'm saying this because uh, I really want to get, uh, get us through this worksheet. I want to get this to a completion right. point with you on it. Um, so it sounds like it's, I want Rich to accept and approve of me and to be seen as doing behaviors that support the center. Correct. So that's, sure. I think that's what I'd be putting in number three. Right, okay. I want Rich to accept me and, and, and accept and approve, and approve of, of what I'm doing. Approve of what I'm doing. Um, and to see that I'm doing things to move the center forward. Yes, to see and to see that I'm moving things forward. Yes. Yeah. Acknowledge you for that. Acknowledge me for. Yes. Moving uh, things bring, forward. Bringing, bringing, now, inf- bringing stuff to the foundation that will move things forward. Right. So that sounds like the goal. Actually, that could be two different goals and two different worksheets. And then it sounds like perhaps a, uh, a third goal you could look at, a third worksheet you could do around this whole situation. And one of the ideas of the forgiveness process is to recognize that in order for my mind to p- produce a hologram called another person out there, there's got to be hundreds of thousands of different files firing. And each goal that I have, if I do that one individually and specifically, will help me to move or collapse the the foundational stuff in each of those different files so that I change the whole dynamic of uh, of whatever that situation is about. So it sounds like a, uh, a another place that you might go with this worksheet is to look at uh, approving of yourself. So that would be a worksheet on self and self-approval. Correct. I'd put that down just as a little side note because oftentimes when you're doing a worksheet, you can just touch into all kinds of things, get conscious of all kinds of things that are periphery issues but are important in their own right. So that would be another important worksheet to do. Okay. And then number four, remember in the uh, in the Why Is This Happening to Me Again intensive, we pointed out that... Um, it, it takes two things for healing to occur. One is I've got to be willing to open the barrier that lets whatever's hidden in me come to the surface. And then 
at the same time, I want to have the active presence of love there. And so in number four, what you want to do is tap into your original created essence. You know, somebody took you from the womb, looked at you, and went, what an awesome presence of love. What a beautiful expression of divine light. And so I invite you to hold yourself as a newborn and really tap into and reconnect with your original being, that awesome expression of divine light. Connect to that presence of love instead of your upset. Right. I'm uh, I'm using an image from a situation that happened this week where uh, I went to get a cup of coffee and there was a young man there sitting at a table by himself and he commented to me about my hat and eventually I ended up having a nice little conversation with him and he was obviously an intelligent, bright little kid and uh, I ended up teaching him a little trick that I know and and uh, you know, just I just okay. left feeling like, uh, you know, like this person there was like. Uh, okay, why don't you go ahead and connect to that? I, I'm just using that image of that child okay. as as, 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 go as for it. something that I can use for myself as you know. Okay. This is me. This is me. You know, right. this is that beautiful young child, it. young person. Active, awesome. intelligent, good, good bright. And, okay, uh, let's do that. And uh, we, we want to get through the next couple of steps. We're down to we've six got about minutes. eight minutes. Six okay, minutes. So, whatever. So, okay, so okay. go ahead and tap into that image. Right. Be with it and really connect and breathe into that, that awesome presence that you are. Right. And then number five, from that space of connectedness, you want to bring your, your answer. Just take the, the one goal. I want Rich to approve of me. Let's do that one. Right, right, right. But take I want Rich to approve of me and move it down to the blank in number five. Right. And I'm going to cancel that out, right? Yeah. So in 5A, in order to collapse my replicate mind's reality, my repeated guilt or fear-based reality, to be liberated from my hostility and fear and go back to my true mind, the mind of being, that original awesome mind that you see in that young man and the truth about me and Rich, I cancel my need for Rich to approve of me. Okay. And I let go of my need to be right. Good, good. I let go of my need to be right. Okay. And then the second step in collapsing the reality is that Oftentimes, there are many generations of of energy that have locked us into these kinds of guilt and fears. So there's a power bigger than us that can assist in moving through that energy. So in 5B, I invite, and the name in Aramaic of that power is Ruka de Kudsha, or the right. higher power people have called it. So I just then I go into the invitation. So I invite, and let's just use the Aramaic Ruka de Kudsha, to incline me toward healing, to restore me to my original nature, love, to assist me in keeping love present, and help me to come into direct conscious relationship with and remove the dissociated and projected parts of my carbon-based memory. How about breathing into and doing those two steps? And as you do, how do you feel? Number six. Well, certainly that heaviness in my chest has, has has gone away. I'm, I'm actually breathing more okay. open and freely. It's, it's still, cool. It's so put in there. Okay, so I now feel uh, freer in my chest, breathing open more freely. How about an emotional level? I feel more accepting of myself. Oh, okay. So self-approval. Awesome. And in then the second part of six, and about the situation of 1B, I can see that. What's your situation? If you look back at that whole well, situation. Well, I can see that this, this is a situation about myself. It's really about my feelings about myself. Mm. So the beauty of touching into that guilt uh, and fear 
is by bringing it out of dissociation, which is what you just did, into awareness, you get to throw it away. And the load that's carried on a tissue level, literally on a chemical level, bang, disappears. Fabulous. Nice work, Richard. Thank you. That's awesome. And then you want to make sure the final step in the process uh, is you want to, you know, you've just canceled the goal that you had for Rich. Right. Now you want to create a goal from your highest being, from love, towards Rich. Right, and that would be the courage to accept him as he is and be at peace and to uh, keep love conscious, active, and present. Cool. So notice the shift that took place is exactly 180 degrees. What you thought you wanted was for him to accept you. And the truth is now you come to the point where you can just open your heart and accept him. Because the part of you that felt threatened by his accusation, the part of you that felt guilt, you just processed out of. Awesome piece of work. So number, number seven, Rich, I acknowledge us for creating truth. And, and you know, awesome right. shift into truth. Perfect love, the presence of who we really are, that real being that we are, and then to embrace you totally in my love and as who you are. That's, that's a fabulous worksheet, sir. Thank you. Cool. Well, I appreciate, I, it was sort of like, you know, what was coming up for me, I needed to deal with it, so that's why I figured I'd just go ahead and call and, and do go through the process because I needed to, I needed to, I, I, it was obvious I needed to do some work at that point. Cool. So, thank you. And, you know, just, just the, uh, uh, one of the things to do for yourself is you might make a couple of notes about it for future worksheets and future work that you want to do is, is notice how one of the, the default your mind has when there's something like this to face in yourself is to have a conversation about somebody else and what their right. problem. And, and, you know, right. it sounds like perhaps he's got a problem, but at the point where I've got one, this, the, the speck in his eye is not my business, the beam in my own is. And so to just make a note to keep the conversation focused on yourself and your work and where you're going with your work. Right. Okay. Thank That's you. a really important one. All right. Great. Well, I am just delighted to be on the team, Richard, and we're down to about... 60 seconds here, so our timing worked out pretty well. That was a, a pretty powerful piece of work. Thank you. Why did you, you know, you realize you're going to become uh, one of our star uh, uh, worksheet recordings now, right? You, you realize that's going to happen. Well, that's okay. That's all right. Everybody <laughs> needs an example, all right. right? That's Take it. Care. That's it. Fabulous. Well, thank you, Richard. We appreciate you and honor you, and we look forward to getting to play with you next summer at Heartland, and we certainly enjoyed playing with you this summer, and we support you in creating, and everybody that's listening, the best year yet of your eternal life. Take care. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal